How's it going everyone? It's your boy Mugen. As you know, I'm a big fan of Berserk, and if you're watching this video, clearly you are as well. We all love to find new ways to experience Berserk in a fresh new way, especially when we're looking at the history, how the idea of Berserk came to be, the inspirations, and what Berserk later created with its huge impact. And I'm sure many inspirations were already shown in a lot of interviews that Murasan did later in his life. And there are some clearly obvious ones. We've got Fist of the North Star, we've got Violence Jack, and there are some great ways you can look at one and see how they perfectly and seamlessly transitioned to create the Berserk we know today. But what about Shoujo. Basically, if you don't know what a shoujo is, it's the demographic for manga that is more prominently tailored towards young girls. Now the genre has kind of widened open a bit to include like young adults, but of course it's got certain characteristics and tropes that adhere to the female demographic. Same how the sign-in demographic. Because let's be honest, Berserk in a lot of ways isn't your typical sign-in. There are a lot of things that Berserk does that when you first start reading, you don't think it would do. When you first start reading Berserk, you don't think there's gonna be a romance story. You don't think there's gonna be characters that have this different sexual identity to them. And while it would give a lot of the vibes and the aesthetics attributed to Berserk, thanks to Fist of the North Star and Violence Jack, I would have to give a lot of story components and arguably everyone's favorite arc in the Berserk story to Shoujo. So the Shoujo manga I wanna talk about is a manga called the Rose of Versailles. The Rose of Versailles is a historical romance that was written by Ryoko Aikida. Now she was part of a revolutionary group called the Year 24 group around the 70s. And this was a time where a lot of manga, uh, specifically shoujo, of course, was still directed towards the young girl. Same how shonen is directed towards the young boy. This kind of pushed the boundaries a bit more because then it led to other people being able to enjoy shoujo without actually having to belong to the demographic. And I've read around five volumes of this so far. I'm a 24 year old male. It's pretty good. I'll just say right ahead, of course, spoilers for Golden Age Berserk and also Rose of Versailles. I haven't finished it yet. I believe I've only read up to like three volumes, but I've read ahead a bit and I'm gonna continue reading it. So there's your spoiler warning. Let's move on. So what does this all have to do essentially with Berserk? The Rose of Versailles is centered around two main characters. We have the historical character and real life figure, Marie Antoinette, who was a very huge prominent figure around the French Revolution, which is when this is based. And female general, I'm saying that, I can't speak French. How do you say it? Oscar Francois de Jarge. There we go, fucking nailed it. Who serves as the commander of the Royal Guard during Marie Antoinette's coronation to become queen and also her time as the Dauphin, the princess essentially, to France. Now the whole story basically kicks off learning about these characters when they're growing up. Oscar is I believe the sixth girl born to a very high noble but because of how Oscar reacted when she was born the nobleman her father decided to name her Oscar and raise her as a male teaching them to fight, to horse ride correctly, to command troops and essentially gave this girl an upbringing of a male even of course calling her Oscar. So Oscar is this almost androgynous, gender-bent kind of figure, which you maybe see a bit more in the year 2020s, but for back then, you know, it was a bit different. Oscar is a character who you could look at in terms of the style of how this manga is drawn, you could perceive to be a male or a female, because they do not show things or characteristics of either gender that kind of gives it away. So as time goes on, Oscar grows up to be a very prominent general and is later inducted into, you know, French high society and becomes promoted to be the royal house guard. Marie Antoinette is grown up to be a very young lady of Austria who is adored by all the people who live around her. And then she is put into an arranged marriage with the Prince of France. But essentially she is shipped off to France. She has to get rid of all her Austrian possessions. She can't really communicate with her family back home. And she has to build a new life essentially in the French royal court, which she slowly does. People become enamored with her beauty and her mannerisms. And then after some tribulations meets Oscar, uh, meets the main characters of the group, including a bunch of others. And there are other characters that we'll get to later. The story starts to revolve around conflicts in high society. And of course, you know, is based in historical accuracy to an extent. So there are events that are soon to come. And of course the manga tells you directly, there are certain things that will be happening to these characters that you cannot stop because 
this is how history played out. So that's kind of the basics. So how does this manga, this shoujo pretty, beautiful, very, very, very 70s like manga influence this hardcore sign-in? And the answer is the Golden Age arc. The Golden Age arc in Berserk, as you probably are watching, is probably your favorite. I'm gonna say by majority, people usually vote that the Golden Age is their favorite arc. And a lot of reasons why. I'd say a lot of major character developments and a lot of things that set up to what characters become and who they are all take place within the Golden Age. And it also establishes the world a bit more with warring factions, countries, nations, high society, politics, and even more gray areas of characters fighting other humans instead of what was the series, a character fighting demons. So I'm gonna call back to an interview that Miyura-san did uh, that's in the Dark Horse Guidebook for Berserk that English readers, I'm sure Japanese readers probably have, talking about his inspirations when making Berserk and of course the Golden Age arc area. Until then, I'd be charging down the Fist of the Nostar route, but that made it much harder to contend with the original himself, Mr. Baronson. It was a good opportunity, so I thought I'd switch weapons and come at it from the angle of the Rose of Versailles and Kaze T Kino Uta. And this was new ground for me. I figured maybe I could put people around me into the story as well as memories from my youth. So he takes this different side of a shoujo manga and reading all different types of manga and things that inspire him in movies and television and a bunch of other stuff to create this whole new kind of story that you wouldn't expect in a story that already had these aesthetics attached to it of this character with a huge fucking sword. So let's kick it off with the politics, the high society. During the Golden Age arc, of course, with Guts being a part of Griffith's Band of the Hawk, Griffith is trying to achieve his dream of having his own kingdom. To do that, he needs to court his way and essentially charm people to get through the high society of Midland. And the way he does that is by meeting Princess Charlotte, courting her slowly, making a name for himself with the other nobles, being on the king's good side, and of course using very alternative and very, very, very bad methods to get what he wants. And this is nothing that already doesn't happen in Rose of Versailles. There are characters, specifically this one called Jean, she's trying to find her way into high society because she knows she was born of a noble birth, but because of circumstances, she grew up in the poor streets of France. So through very, very sketchy, fucked up means, she is able to court people, persuade people to do her bidding. She meets a man who she promises to marry as long as he does things for her that are very, very messed up, including the burning down of a house and the death of a noble woman who actually took her in. Now, does this sound a bit familiar? There's an actual chapter where Griffith, when he is trying to make sure that no one can interfere with him making progress towards marrying Princess Charlotte, most of all her mother, who vows vengeance against Griffith, you know, he gets the upper hand and, and in fact actually just burns her and all the other people who are conspiring against him inside this very large house. Uh, great chapter, very messed up, very awful. But that's one thing that you can see there that is actually very huge. You have a character who's trying to get what they want and they're doing ulterior motives to do so in this kind of very non-battle-like sense. This is nothing new, but it was something that I can see he read and went, I can do this with the character I have now. While we're on Griffith, we can all acknowledge that Griffith has characteristics that aren't necessarily male and aren't necessarily female, very androgynous. Characters always talk about how when they see Griffith, they're very enamored by his beauty and are unsure that Griffith is actually a female or a male. And I think this goes back to some of the character designs that you can see in Rose of Versailles. Some of these character designs are very this manga and actually just very shoujo manga. With shoujo manga having this beautiful style of large eyes, glintering sparkles, and hair flowing like manes, that is something that you can see in Griffith in a lot of ways. Mostly when he's trying to portray himself that way. Not necessarily all the time, obviously. If you look at characters like Oscar in Rose of Versailles being this character who is a girl, but can't be perceived that way, and sometimes isn't, is just perceived as this very masculine, but then this also very feminine character, you can see this complete mirror of the two. Oscar is trying her best to make sure everything goes well in her own little bubble, her own sphere of influence of being a royal guard, and especially with the French Revolution slowly approaching and the people being worried about taxes. Then you have Griffith. Griffith portrays himself to be like Oscar, to be noble, to be heartwarming, to be caring, to be very open and honest. But of course, it's all a facade. Griffith portrays himself to be like Oscar. 
when in reality Griffith is just Griffith, this person who is willing to do whatever they want to get what they want. There's all this idea of also sexuality, whether or not Griffith has this kind of sexual tension with Guts, whether it is sexual, whether it is just companionship and being just best friends. It is something that you can see influenced by shoujo manga. Oscar later in some volumes has a best friend called Andre. Andre is a male. And Andre sees Oscar as just a friend, but then through some circumstances of being saved by her, Andre finds himself slowly attached to Oscar, but still acknowledges that Oscar doesn't want to be seen as a female, doesn't want to be seen as a beauty, but just wants to be seen as Oscar. And so this becomes this kind of romance that is, you know, somewhat tentative and not perfect, right? And I feel like you can see through these avenues, these are the things that Mirasan was thinking about, when trying to make sure that the story of the Golden Age and the story of man versus man can be a bit more interesting politically and also add in some things that maybe people didn't know they wanted in the series. Romance, of course, is a huge thing that can be seen in shoujo. It's not primary, but it is something that definitely birthed the demographic in a way. And so that's where you come into love triangles. You got the story of Guts, Griffith, Casca. Casca being in love with Griffith, but knowing she can never have him and then meeting Guts and hating him and then realizing what is it about him I'm attracted to? It is something that is extremely, extremely rom-com kind of-esque. And you can see it portrayed in Rose of Versailles. There is a love triangle in a way. While Oscar has relationships with characters like Andre, Oscar, she is a woman, she still actually has feelings for Marie Antoinette. She admires how she can be this very open individual who can be very open with her emotions and not be pushed down by a patriarchy. But the problem with that is that it then endangers everyone in high court because she's spending so much money that that causes the French Revolution. And so this is the kind of conflict that Oscar is faced with with the love triangle, wanting to protect Marie Antoinette, but also seeing how doomed society is, and then also wanting to still be with Andre, but also make sure that she is not portrayed to be just this woman that is to be obtained. It kind of goes against the characteristics of gender roles in story, but also kind of evokes what people feel like when they think of them. And it can kind of be the same with Guts in a sense. He's this big hulking dude with a big fucking sword. And then he's willing to put his life on the line for the girl that hates him and wants to kill him. It's the, you know, the enemies turn lovers kind of thing. And a lot of people enjoy that. And I myself am a big fan of it. I won't lie. We love a good love story, don't we lads? But these are the things that I found very interesting and actually kind of crazy that Mirasan clearly took inspiration from. There are other shoujo manga, of course, that I'm sure he read and probably took some more inspiration from. But these are some examples that are actually really, really cool when it comes to Berserk portraying this kind of look when you look at the cover. And then on the inside, it's a completely different story, especially in the Golden Age arc. I think the Golden Age arc is loved that way because there's so much story that happens that isn't necessarily involved with a lot of killing. There is a lot of action, but then there's also a lot of romance. There's a lot of drama, there's a lot of politics, there's a lot of grey choices being made. It also shows how much characters, or a group of characters, are a victim of circumstance. Before the Golden Age arc, Guts doesn't have a band, he doesn't have a group of characters, right? And so when you're introduced to the band of Hawk, then you have a group set of characters, you have a cast. And that cast is then, of course, playing their different roles. And you can see that Rose of Versailles, of course, because there's so many characters in the High Court. There's so many characters I haven't mentioned, both historical and fictional. So when you look at how they react, and then re-react to their situations, the similarities become closer and closer. Oscar and Griffith, again, I'll go back to that similarity. Oscar is someone who is a victim of their situation and their morals. Being someone of a high court and being a royal guard, she wants to make sure that things remain the same because there were times during the story when everything's perfect and then they just go bad because Oscar cannot control the people of Paris. The French Revolution happened anyway. You can look at the history books. These things happened, they were unavoidable. So Oscar is a victim of their circumstance. Whereas Griffith is a victim of his choices. Griffith makes choices that ruin things for everyone. And that is, in a way, you can attribute to whoever's fault, but you can see how these characters, while very similar put together aesthetically and also in a lot of, you know, pathos way in terms of storytelling, extremely similar. But then when you look at them more and more in the specifics, very different. It's it's really cool to see how much it's exactly the same, but at the same time, totally different. I think it just goes to show how much Mirasan actually was very inspired by not just his genre, but all kinds of genre. 
and wanted to implement that as much. Also, this isn't specifically attributed to just the Golden Age arc. If you look at characters like Serpico, Serpico is Andre, basically. Serpico is someone who is willing to do anything to make sure his Lady of Court is kept safe and needed, which is Farnese. And Andre's Lady of Court is, of course, Oscar. You know, you may not think it, I, you know, but he's a looker. He is someone that a lot of characters, and I'm sure girl readers probably look at, or even boy readers for that matter, who probably look at Serpico and think, damn, man, that guy's, hmm, say he knows he protects that girl. Half-sister, hot, damn, hell yeah, let's go. In all seriousness, I would actually give Rose of Versailles a really good read. It was something that was kind of polarizing when I was telling people I was reading it. I just finished reading Vagabond, this really hardcore philosophical manga that is highly regarded. And now I'm going to read this very cutesy anime looking shoujo manga with all these pretty sparkles in here. But if you keep thinking that I'm bullshitting in a lot of ways, think of how kind of weird looking Gonagai's Devil Man was and see how much that and Violence Jack, also written by Gonagai, influenced Berserk. I really believe Rose of Versailles has that same kind of power. Rose of Versailles, even though it looks like this, it really, really, really created this. And that's undeniable in my book. If you want something different, something like Gona Guy's Devil Man, but I guess for a different demographic, give it a read because it's very similar. I actually would argue that it's more similar to Devil Man than it is Berserk. Not only because it was written in the 70s, but also because there were a lot of things about it in terms of its art style, the way it goes from being very happy cutesy to very fucked up and dark really quick is something that I think was maybe just a 70s thing, or it was the meta of writing manga back in the day. That's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, definitely give Rose of Osai a read. And if you have any queries or any things that you want to let me know, maybe you found even other inspirations that no one else has talked about. Comment, please. i like to hear it. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a like and a subscribe. That'd be pretty cool, man, because, you know, bigger number, better person. I, my PP is still too small. It needs to get bigger. That's all, guys. Again, thank you for watching. As always, see you next one.